Hey there, poultry peeps. Welcome to the Hobby Farm Guys channel. I'm Brian, that guy is Steve, and our pal Eric is behind the camera making the magic happen. Today we take a look at the science of imprinting. How and why do baby birds imprint and accept as their mother humans, cats, or a set of boots? We'll break it down right after the intro, which is a perfect chance to hit those like and subscribe buttons. We've all seen the picture or video of the long line of baby ducklings waddling dutifully after their mama. Whether they're scampering down to the pond or venturing into oncoming traffic, the ducklings are almost hyper diligent in trailing after mom. Compare that to the poor mom at the grocery store, right, with kids strewn across aisles 3 through 12, yeah. trying to get them to put the sugary cereal and cookies back on the shelf. So, how is it that Mama Duck gets those ducklings to toe the line? Well, she gets a little help from Mother Nature. Ducklings identify their mother and siblings in the first days of life and imprint on them. Later, they won't get confused and follow other mothers or siblings, thus greatly reducing the chance that the ducklings will wander off into danger. And it's not just ducklings where this behavior is seen. Ducks are precocial, meaning they're hatched at a relatively advanced stage of development and they're able to move about independently rather quickly after hatching. When they hatch, they don't innately know who their parents are, but they use environmental clues to attach themselves to their protector. This imprinting behavior is strongest in precocial birds, particularly geese and ducks, but it's also quite strong in turkeys and grouse. Chickens also display this trait to a lower extent, as do several mammalian species. The thing is, it doesn't always work like it's supposed to. Erroneous imprinting, whether the young bird identifies and attaches to the wrong mother, can occur given the right set of circumstances. In the first days of life, during what's called the sensitive period, this phenomenon we call imprinting occurs. During imprinting, images of the bird's mother, and to some extent its siblings, act like a metaphorical stamp, leaving an impression in the brain that guides the young bird on who to follow. Though it usually works out that the mother is the first thing the bird sees and imprints on, this isn't always the case. If a bird is separated from its mother at birth, it's possible that it imprints to and grows up following whatever was present and moving around it during that formulative time, whether it's a duck, a chicken, a human, a dog, or a rubber ball even. In these animals where imprinting occurs, it's more than just bonding. For example, if a puppy's born without a dog mother and it's raised by a human, it will grow up and be very close to that human who raises it. But instinctively, that dog knows it's not a human. As it grows and meets other dogs, it will know instinctively that it's a dog. But ducks and geese don't have that instinct to know that they're a duck or a goose. If they imprint on and are raised by a human, they believe they're a human. And if they meet another duck or goose later in life, they don't recognize themselves as a duck or goose, but still think of themselves as human. So imprinting has been used by mankind for centuries in domesticating animals and poultry. As far back as the first century BC in Rome, it was noted that removing duck eggs from the nest and placing them with surrogate hens resulted in reducing the wild behaviors of the ducklings. In rural China, farmers have for centuries imprinted newly hatched ducklings to a special stick which is then used to bring the ducks out to the rice paddies to control the snail population. But it wasn't until the early 1900s that any scientific studies were done on the phenomenon that we know is imprinting. Oscar Heinroth was the first to identify and record the spectacle of what would later come to be known as erroneous imprinting. He noticed that unlike other species, gray lag geese would attach to humans instead of their own mother straight out of the egg. This abnormal imprinting behavior was further studied and eventually described in detail by Conrad Lorenz, an Austrian biologist whose work studying imprinting on geese ultimately won him the Nobel Prize in 1973. Lorenz found that when young birds came out of their eggs, they would become attached to the first moving object they encountered. Now, in most cases in the wild, that would be their mother. But Lawrence found he could easily get the young birds to attach to him, given the right conditions. And it wasn't just him. The young birds would also attach to inanimate objects, such as a pair of boots, a white ball, even an electric train, if the item was presented at the right time. This is an example of filial imprinting, 
where a newborn rapidly attaches to and learns how to follow the first salient moving object it sees. Another form of imprinting, sexual imprinting, also occurs and helps determine who they will find attractive when they reach adulthood. Lawrence's theory of imprinting is still being fine-tuned by scientists. Further studies conducted over the years have continued to shed light on these processes. Among other things, they found that the imprinting window may not be as narrow, and the initial imprinting may not be as irreversible as once thought. But in general, Lorenz's work has stood the test of time. The biological science of imprinting in precocial birds can get quite complex. In layman's terms, it's postulated that the young bird receives stimulation that is comforting when some aspect of the object has the capacity to innately stimulate the production of endorphins. No explicit reward, such as food or warmth, is needed. Sight plays a role, but it's thought that sound and smell may also be involved. There is a negative side to erroneous imprinting. Birds that imprint on human parents prefer the company of humans to that of their own species. For conservationists and naturalists, this becomes a problem when attempting to care for and release injured animals. Puppets and costumes are often used to help combat this. As a hobby farmer, having your birds imprint on you can bring its own set of challenges. Birds that imprint on and prefer humans can display some interesting behavior. It can get a little awkward when your friendly pet duck comes and flattens herself out at your feet demanding you mate with her, and the gander you hand-reared is busy humping on your boot. Research has demonstrated that housing chicks communally prior to imprinting experience decreases imprintability or responsiveness. It appears that under these circumstances, they become imprinted on each other, and this prior imprinting hinders formation of imprinting towards a new object. Further experiments have demonstrated some elasticity in the imprinting process as well. In one experiment, six male white holland turkeys were used. Three were imprinted to humans, and the other three were imprinted to turkeys. All six were tamed to both turkeys and humans. When confronted with humans in the absence of sexually receptive turkeys, all six courted humans. On the other hand, when confronted with turkeys in the absence of humans, all six courted turkeys. However, when offered a choice between humans and turkeys at the same time, the human imprinted birds courted humans, while the turkey imprinted birds courted turkeys. Thus, imprinting is considered effective preferential rather than exclusive response to sexual and social stimuli. All right, so while it sounds pretty cool to have your cute little duck think you're its mama, before you go rushing out to order some duck eggs, remember, you are its mama. Imprinted ducklings need constant care. It's one thing to dream about walking through the yard with a duckling at your heels, but quite another to wake up at 2 a.m. with a duck turd on your pillow. As the mom, you're responsible to feed, protect, and care for it. And like a baby, it will cry for attention to have its needs met at all hours. You can't take back imprinting. You can't hand it off to someone else. Human imprinted birds identify with those people for the rest of their lives. Geese can live for 20 years, and they're not normal birds. They won't be able to relate to their bird peers and probably won't join a flock. Instead, they'll depend upon you for all social interaction and stimulation. So there are some of the basics of imprinting. We hope you learned something. And if you enjoyed the video, how about a thumbs up? Even better, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well? If you have a request for another topic, please leave it in the comments and we'll get it on our list. Thanks for watching everybody and until next time, happy hobby farming.